to Roger Stansfield. I met Roger from What Car. Hello. Hello, Roger. How you doing? Are you all right? Yeah, I think so. Thanks. Okay. Behind us, the Mercedes A Class. What do you think of it? I think it's very good. It looks, um, it looks right. We've all seen sketches over the years, um, gradually leading up towards this. But when they actually took the covers off it last night, I think everybody was impressed. Yeah, it's not really the traditional Mercedes image, though, is it? There's all these drivers that like their big flash Mercedes. What do you think they're going to make of it? Uh, Mercedes are, are working very hard to try and make sure that they think it's good. Um, but mes the traditional Mercedes image is actually changing. If you look at the SLK Roadster, the V-Class People Carrier, now this, some of the estates they're doing, uh, and other coupes they're doing, Mercedes is no longer just big traditional family saloons. But y you're right, they do have one... Um, PR job to do on this. They've got to reassure people who spend £100,000 on an S-Class that they're not watering down the Mercedes image by building this, which is going to be on sale for about £13,000. They could have done something really funky with it, couldn't they? And it is nice and it's different from Mercedes, but do you think it stands out enough? Because I don't know if I'm convinced. It might not stand out enough here in a motor show with all the glitz and the glamour, but I think when you see one on the road it'll stand out, certainly for the first 18 months, two years of its life anyway. So when can we see them on the road? Well, you will get them in Europe probably around about autumn this year. The exact timetable for UK hasn't been finalised yet, but I think we're looking at spring 98. So what about behind the wheel? Do you think it's going to be the true Mercedes driving experience? Well, they're talking about fun. They still say it will be safe, it will have the quality, the comfort image. They, they went to very great pains to stress that last night. But because it's aimed at a younger audience, they're talking about fun. Um, and if, if, they do any, if they've done anything similar to what Ford have done with car, I think we can look forward to driving it. This is the highlight of the show, without doubt. This is a very, very important car, both in terms of the motor industry itself and certainly for Mercedes-Benz. As we heard from Roger Stansfield, this is a very exciting story for Mercedes, and I'm joined by Doug Wallace from Mercedes UK. The idea of um, a small car in Mercedes, it just doesn't sort of quite seem to gel together. Why was this decision made? Well, the market for the small car is a market that we should be in. We're growing in volume all the time. So although this is a small car, in every way, in every inch, it's a Mercedes. Small car, definitely. What about small car pricing? What will this retail at, Doug? Well, we still haven't got final prices yet, but I think you'll find that the car, in fact, in the UK will be very, very competitive. How do you think that your, the drivers of your top-of-the-range luxury Mercedes are going to feel when they see these all over the roads? Are you taking away a little bit of the exclusivity that comes with having a Mercedes badge, do you think? No, I don't think so, because we're always a premium car. We're a quality car manufacturer. Many people, for instance, who have S-Class cars will probably have this as a second car, or maybe their wife will have it. So, no, that doesn't give us a problem at all. In fact, it's the opposite. We'll get more and more people onto the Mercedes ladder. Yeah, you've got an incredible customer loyalty, haven't yeah, you, as a, have. as a company anyway. Do you feel that this will, will happen, you'll get people buying this as a second car, maybe a car for children? Very much so. We'll get younger people into buying this car, people who perhaps at the moment can't afford to get on the Mercedes ladder. But yes, this will be their entry level, so it'll be very good. Is there a sense of responsibility in a way with a company like Mercedes that are renowned for producing high quality executive vehicles to make sure that a cheaper car isn't cheaper, that it still has that level of class and is it quite difficult to do? It's been quite difficult on many ways to get this car from the concept to the design stage and then into production but it has all the qualities of every other Mercedes you'll find on the road. It's a very very safe car which was one of the prime objectives and also very very spacious indeed, very flexible car. All of the seats except for the driver's seat for instance can come out so on the one hand you have a small family car and the next if you want to uh, travel with something quite bulky in the car very quickly take the seats out and there you've got uh, luggage space.
But from the inside of the A-Class, it's incredibly spacious. Is there actually storage space underneath the floor as well? Because I know there's um, space in between, isn't there? That's right. Basically, you've got two floor pans with a car with a space in between. And in between there goes the exhaust pipe, the battery. Later on, if there's an electric version, the actual electric batteries will go between that space. So it makes, it, it makes very much sense because the driver is here, the passengers are here, there's no engine in front, it's underneath. All the rest of the, the gubbins of the car, if you like, are between the two floor pans. I like that word, the gubbins. But does the gubbins being under there mean that it's maybe more expensive to service and to look after? No, actually it's quite the contrary. It's actually easy to get to the top of the engine from the front of the car and all the rest of the engine you can get access from underneath of the car. The side panels at the front are made of a special plastic and are bolted onto the car, so repair costs on the vehicle are actually quite, quite reasonable. Does that um, increase safety levels as well, with all the mechanics being away from the front of the vehicle? Very much so. This was fundamental in the design of the car. Most small cars have the tendency that in an accident at the front, the engine gets pushed literally back into the driver. So with this car, with an accident, the engine goes underneath and away from the driver. So you, you're much, much safer in this car. There's so much new technology on this vehicle and so much new development that I'm sure is incredibly expensive. How have you managed to do this, yet keep the price down and keep it affordable? Well, of course, Mercedes does invest a lot in development and a lot in safety, so all that has come from that overall budget. And, of course, we've learnt a lot from our other cars as well and have passed that information down onto the A-Class. And how many of these do you hope to see on the roads of Europe, say, in five years' time? Well, in Britain, for instance, we'll probably sell 18 to 20,000 of these, and we think that number will grow quite rapidly. And, in fact, already, without any advertising or anything in the UK, there's a lot of people who have actually approached us and say, hey, I'd like to have this car.